Amen, amen, that is what I want. Amen, amen. Yes, amen, amen, that is what I want, to be a blessing and to be at peace. Are you at peace today? I hope you're at peace, but even if you're not, I tell you I am glad you're here because you're in for a, just a wonderful treat, a wonderful blessing here today. And so I welcome you and I'm delighted that you have joined us and I have with me here two amazing people that are going to share just uh, wonderful things. So stay with us because you are in for just a tremendous, tremendous gift from God today. And so as we get started today, I just want to let you know that if you ever want to be a part of this panel uh, anytime this quarter, really anytime this year, we would love to have you uh, with us and to come and share. So by the way, uh, if, you, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the topic we're studying, we're studying the book of Isaiah. And in studying the book of Isaiah, we actually have a website where you can go to and get access to all the readings that we're doing. So this is the website, sabbathschoolpersonalministries.org, and you can uh, do, do your reading there. Uh, it's just about, about five minutes or so it takes to do a daily reading, reading from the Bible and some commentary. And uh, you can follow along a little bit closer to the topic that we're covering here. In fact, I'm going to, if you make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you like us, or if you're watching on Facebook, just click like. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be posting the topic for the following week, and I'll post both the reading, and I'm going to also post an audio file. So if you would rather listen to the lesson, you, I, I'm going to have that on there. So make sure to subscribe or like so that you'll have access to that when it goes uh, on, on, the, on the page tomorrow. It'll be posted. That'll be the topic for the following week which is going to be uh, just a tremendous topic as we continue this study of the book of Isaiah. All right, my friends. So with that, I want you to meet my friends who are here today. And we begin just uh, right before we pray by sharing what we are grateful for. And I'll begin by sharing that I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I can feel in my heart peace right now. Just the peace of God. And... Uh, so that is a priceless gift. And so let's go uh, and uh, listen now from my other friends here. And why don't we, we begin with you, Yvonne? Good morning. And you're still muted, Yvonne, so we can't hear you. So good morning, everyone. I'm so happy and grateful for the Sabbath day. Because I'm sure for me personally, if it wasn't for Sabbath, I would be still busy trying to get some stuff done. So I'm really grateful for the Sabbath day and for the opportunity to just share on this today and just for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Prince of Peace. Mm. 
Amen. And I'm glad you're here, Yvonne. If you don't know Yvonne, she is the prayer ministry's leader at our church, at Seabird Church, and uh, just a real blessing. And today we have, I have a, my wonderful friend who's a fellow pastor. He's a church planter uh, right here in Maryland, just uh, about 30 minutes or so from here. So Pastor Jian Lee, we're so glad you're here. <laughs> Greet your Seabrook family, my friend. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, happy Sabbath. Uh, I'm so thankful to be here uh, to learn the word of, God, word of God with all of you. Uh, pray, you know, that God help us to be more thankful day by day. That's wonderful. So, Pastor Jian, uh, why don't you tell uh, the church family that may not know about the church plant that you're involved in right now and, and the work you're doing for the Lord? Yeah. Uh, I'm a church planter. Uh, maybe you should, I should say like a, I'm a Chinese church planter uh, in Rockville, uh, Maryland area. So here, if Pastor Jamie uh, don't, doesn't mind, uh, I would like to invite, you know, uh, any of you uh, who are interested to, you know, uh, to help uh, to reach the Chinese people or want to get involved in our Chinese church planting, uh, please, uh, you know, contact us. I will be very happy to help you to get involved. That's exciting, Pastor. So you're beginning a Chinese-speaking church in Rockville, Maryland. And so how can people contact you, Pastor? Uh, you can uh, contact me, uh, my email or my cell phone number. Feel free to uh, my share. My cell phone number is 2 Yes, my cell phone number is 202-878-1569. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Pastor, for, for sharing that. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, indeed, uh, China has, what, 1.3 billion people? Is that the population? Um, there's, yes, uh, maybe more than that, 1.4. <laughs> so many, so many people. Uh, is in China. That that's just comparison. That's about um, let's see. That would be like what three or four times bigger than the than the than the United States. And and it's still not many Adventists uh, in in China. Although some of the largest Adventist churches in the world are in China, uh, as the individual congregations that is. But anyway, this is a fascinating topic. We're so glad you're here, Pastor. And uh, today we're talking, of course, on the topic of uh, from the book of Isaiah of the noble prince of peace and so uh, everybody thank you for sharing your comments sharing your gratitudes your happy sabbath we're just delighted that you're here you're in for a real treat today and so let's let's have a word of prayer and Yvonne would you please uh, lead us in prayer sure father god we are so grateful for your sabbath day we're so grateful for the opportunity that we can share your light with others Father, we just invite your Holy Spirit's presence in our midst. And may you be born afresh in our hearts today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Very good. And so uh, we're looking at the, the, the scripture for this week, the memory verse that was suggested is Isaiah 9 and verse 6. And it's just a powerful, powerful uh uh, scripture, one of the favorites in all of the Bible. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called, everybody say it with me, you're from home, wonderful, counselor, wonderful. mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Prince of peace. The prince of peace comforted the afflicted and afflicted the comfortable, someone said. Um, can you use more peace in your life right now? I, I share with you that I, uh, I'm grateful to be so peaceful, uh, to know that uh, I'm at peace with God, with myself, with everyone, um, and that uh, I haven't, I haven't uh, created any uh, unnecessary fights around. I have peace about that. Um, and on the business of, of serving people and saving people. Uh, that's why I'm so excited to have here today um, Pastor Jen uh, and, uh, and Yvonne, who are both 
on this uh, on this wonderful journey of spreading peace especially inner peace because external peace is the result of inner peace when there is conflict uh, in a person in a family in a in a a circle of friends or in a company in a church uh, it's not the external circumstances but it's the internal turmoil that um, boils over into chaos so just delighted so um, I like to show you this beautiful beautiful uh, quote that I like to uh, for, uh, that I like for you to see and it comes from this book called thoughts from the Mount of Blessing and I'm gonna put it on the screen so you have so everybody can see it. And let's uh, let's let's take a look at it. Uh, let's see if we can have uh, Pastor Jen. I'm gonna put it up there for for us. And if you can read it for everybody, that'll be wonderful. Sure, I can read. Uh, Christ is the Prince of Peace, Isaiah chapter nine verse six, and it is his mission to restore to earth and heaven the peace that the sin has broken being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ romans 5 uh, verse 1 whoever consents to renounce sin and open his heart to the love of christ becomes a partaker of his heavenly peace mm. Thank you so much for reading that, Pastor. So Jesus is the Messiah. And above all, he also came to enlighten, comfort, and to save his people. So today we're going to look at uh, uh, Isaiah chapters 9 through 12 very briefly. Uh, as we see how the Messiah is introduced within the context of rebellion of Judah uh, and of Israel. And so we'll look at the light of Galilee, the child made gift, the rod of punishment, the stem of Jesse, and the Savior. Now, if you read and you or heard your lesson before time, before now, I'm sure you'll be able to follow a lot closer. But even if you did not, if there, if there may be some things here that are difficult to follow, please, you can do difficult things. Stay with us um, and don't leave because I assure you that if you stick around, at the end of our time today, you may just have some better tools to grow in that inner peace that we're talking about today, okay? So, in fact, um, I want to bring a question out for everybody uh, as we look at the noble prince of peace. And the question is, is this. It has been said that peace is an inside job. Is it? Is it that way? Do you understand it to be that way? What do you think? Share in the in your comments. Uh, let's begin with that com with, with this question: Is peace really an inside job? And who wants to go first here, uh, Pastor uh, Jian or Ivan? I see you speaking, Ivan, but you're muted. Sorry, yeah. I'm just thinking about the passage in Romans. Um, I think it's twelve, verse eighteen. It says, "As much as life." within you live peaceable with all men so that, is, that means that peace has to come from within it has to begin with you and um so therefore i really think it's an inside job if you're peaceable with yourself if you have peace within then that peace will expel to to others will um exuberate um, to others and so that peace that you have will be shown and as you live and that um that will be a part of you so those within your 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 sphere of influence will be drawn to be peaceful too as well mm, thank you thank you so much yvonne so it has to be it has to be something that happens within and yvonne agrees with that pastor jan well from from your perspective uh, all the way from the orient from china what what is is it an inside job peace uh, yes, I believe it is inside the job. I can share uh, one like a short testimony here. When I study uh, my you know applied theology in college, 
uh, I really uh, had, you know, financial challenges during that time. And then I had like four jobs uh, in the school, during the school time. So one day I was, you know, working in the garden and the financial apartment, the director of the financial apartment called me. They say, you have to pay the school fee for uh, last semester and this semester because I, I didn't have much money to pay it. And the school asked me pay for both semester. When I, you know, heard that message, uh, my heart just, you know, uh, feel very down, feel very low. I, I feel, oh, no peace in my heart, very struggling at that time. So I start praying in my heart. And there are song can came to my mind. The song uh, is about God uh, will take care of you. So I just started singing that song slowly, slowly. God will take care of you. So when mm. I singing that song, when I pray in my heart silently, oh, my heart full of peace, full of joy, full of hope. So I believe the Bible says the fear is not come from God. God is willing to give us peace because he is peace. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that. So you could have peace in your heart, my friend, uh, even before the money came. Even before the money came, you relied on that promise. God will take care of me. I'm going to be okay. Oh, man, that's Amen. so exciting. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm sure folks, uh, folks, uh, uh, who are watching right now could share on that too. And uh, so Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Uh, he tells us, let not your heart be troubled. The heart and the mind are to be at peace. Yes, Brother Thomas, thank you for sharing that. And uh, we see here that uh, Michelle adds, peace is definitely an inside job. When you feel peace, others will be attracted to your peace. Praise God for sharing that. And by the way, I tell you that um, a peaceful heart is a grateful heart. And I see George just getting at that when she writes, my biggest gratitude is for peace of mind. Despite the year I've been through, I'm still smiling. My family is safe. God is good. Thank you so much. All right, and I see all your other gratitudes. Beautiful. Keep sharing, people. Even if we don't get to put it on the screen here for everybody to see, um, others can read. Here's another coming from Dwight Palmer. Peace is definitely from inside. Once you have this inner peace, you will be able to display it in a Christ-like manner in your everyday life automatically. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for sharing. And uh, we got to continue here with our topic. You keep on sharing. We keep asking questions. You keep on sharing and blessing us. Let's look at the topic of the light of Galilee. Okay. So what we have here with the light of Galilee is uh, the scripture here from Isaiah chapter 9. And it says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death upon them. A light has shined. And you can see the parallel here from the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9 and the fulfillment of it in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. So now stick with me, especially if you haven't been reading this. Uh, so pay close attention here. I'm going to give a little history. This was in response to Ahaz's request for aid. So a guy named Tiglath Pileser III, he was the king of Assyria, he attacked Israel and took the regions of Naphtali, Zebulun, and Transjordan. Later, Salmanazar V conquered the rest of Israel's territories and deported the remaining population. In other words, we're talking here about a big, big mess that they were dealing with. There's just, just so much, so much going on uh, all over, just the chaos completely. In the country um, and in uh, this land 
was the first to be conquered and filled with darkness. Uh, and and uh, so what happened was a lot of people moved in and uh, basically the church was displaced. And uh, it seemed like there was no hope. The society became corrupt. And you know what this region was called? This was the region of Galilee. It would also be the first to see the light that the Messiah or the Savior that was being promised, that's where the ministry started. In fact, that is where the ministry for the most part took place in Galilee, not in Jerusalem, but in the north, uh, in, the, in this region that had been so devastated. So Jesus spent most of his time during his public ministry in this region by the sea of what? By the sea Galilee. of Galilee. Yes. So um, you you hear this scripture where it says a great light shone, a great light um, has been seen. Those who dwelt in the land of shadow, the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. So I have a question for you all. Let me ask you this. Um, has God great light come over you? And I tell you that God, God's great light has come over us. And I don't know what you're going through right now. You may be watching right now. It's like, what light? Everything seems dark right now in my life. But I want, I want to encourage you to stick around, to stick around. Uh, someone has said, um, follow the winners. Uh, if you want a life of brightness, a life of peace, then make sure to surround yourself. Make sure to seek out people who are enjoying that light and that peace. So even if you cannot answer affirmatively this question, please stick around. Don't leave. Because what if something that you hear you hear today here may just help you to get on a better path? So share of those of you who can say, yes, God, great, God's great light has come over me. Please share. And uh, let's, let's listen to Yvonne now. Share with us on, on this question. So I'm not able to pinpoint a specific time that God's great light has come over me since I was born into this faith. In fact, my mom said she dedicated me from in the womb to God. She was also very careful to give me names to depict the character traits of Christ because she wanted me to embrace um, these characteristics. So I would say that for me, from a child, I was daily exposed to the light of God through daily morning and evening worship. For us, the family altar was a stable in our home. It was not an option. First thing in the morning and in the evening, we'd meet for morning devotions, and there we would be taught about Jesus, who is the light of this world. And then we were encouraged to do our own daily devotions and to invite the Holy Spirit's presence in our hearts. And by doing so, we would become lights to all those in our fear of influence. Mm. But like so many others, um, so often in my own humanity, I've strayed, my heart wanders away, but the Holy Spirit continues to tug at my heart. And I like how a Baptist always phrases it. He says, God relentlessly pursues us with his love and always pointing us out the path back to Jesus, who is the light of the world. Amen. Thank you, Yvonne. But you know what the encouraging thing that I get from what you, what you, what you share is, is uh, I could spend all day here telling you about how uh, God is moving me out of darkness and into his marvelous light, because I don't have a story like yours. My, my, I was born into a very, very messed up situation. And so the encouragement is that uh, the one's children and your great and your grandchildren uh, can have a testimony like yours where where uh, you're just from the beginning. My wife is the same, by the way. She can't remember a time when she did not feel loved by Jesus, loved by God. And that is just terrific. And I want that for my children and one day for my grand my grandchildren like you're enjoying right now, Ivan. So thank you for sharing. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's go to the next uh, topic. Uh, for our conversation here today, and that is uh, what we can call the child-made gift. Uh, 
unto us a child uh, unto us a son is born and to us a child is given um, and or rather for unto us a child is born for uh, unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder let me put it on the screen so you can see it uh, the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called and this is one of the most loved lines of the whole Bible when when Jesus here is called ahead of time wonderful comes for <clears throat> mighty god everlasting father prince of peace oh <laughs> those are some beautiful beautiful words he is wonderful uh, just as the divine angel of the lord described his own name to another family and that was samson's family and that's in judges 13 8 uh, god there is named his name is wonderful and uh, then ascended toward heaven in the sacrificial flame on, on that gentleman's altar he was worshiping god and that's how god uh, described divinity to manoah that was his name and here it was prefiguring his offering of himself more than 1,000 years later. All right, that's in uh, that's from Judges 13. Okay, so um, let me ask you a question, everybody. Which description of uh, Jesus touches your heart the most? I mean, is it that the government that he is a ruler? The government it will be is upon his shoulder even if not visible uh, sometimes in this world yet or is a wonderful counsel mighty god of us father prince of peace which one touches you the most would you share in the chat that would be wonderful uh but let's uh let's hear uh let's hear now from uh, my friend from china pastor jan would you share uh yes uh, uh for me i would i would like to mention two things here uh that touch, uh, touched my heart the most. First, uh, I want to say justice. According to the Bible, uh, God's justice in all his ways. And the King David also mentions righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. So God is justice, but when we look uh this world uh we can see um no justice uh, full of the violence or uh, injustice but when we look at jesus life we can see that jesus bring the justice to this world bring the justice of god to this world uh, um, um we have uh a little boy and he just like a uh, 16 months and his name is called justice the reason that we give uh, him this name because we want you know remind us and remind him that god is justice also is the encouragement for us to pursue to you know to have the character uh of justice of god in our daily life so i think i believe this is the one that touched my most touched my heart the second one i want to share is about uh mighty god mighty god you know the love of god touched me so much according to the first john chapter 4 verse 8 mentioned god is love love is the character of god when we look at the great controversy, uh, we can see the character of God is love, and it tells us that Satan is the evil one. And a long time, long time ago in heaven, you know, Satan, uh, which he also called Lucifer, rebuked God, and he said that God is injustice, and God is not the love God, and he wants to be like God. So here, um, we have to know that God's attributes, um, both those attributes are God's character. One of God's attributes is the is 
God's eternal or immortal life. This one, nobody can take it because God is the creator and we are the creature, including Satan. Satan. So we cannot let God you know, to have these attributes. Then the other one is God is love, God is patient, God is holy. And God wants us to pursue it, to have it, to grow it in our daily lives. So when I say this, you know, I can see that God's immortal and he is love and he sent his only begotten son to save us. So this demonstrates that he is love, he saved me. So this yeah also touched me the most. Wow. I'm not sure it makes sense or not. Oh, it makes, yeah, I, I tell you what, just looking at your face makes sense. The joy that you have of just knowing that God is for you, that God is, uh, uh, God is good. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Very good. Um, and Yvonne, what's your story on this topic? So like Jen, um, I just, like you said, you know, you could just see his expression that God is truly love. So Jesus has been described as a wonderful, merciful Savior, long-suffering, gracious, Prince of Peace, and full of compassion and so much more. But for me, the one that ties up my heartstring is full of compassion. You know, in the Bible, there are over 20 verses that speak about the compassion of Christ. And compassion really means to empathize with someone who is maybe suffering and having that feeling that you feel compelled to ease that suffering. And like Jesus, when he saw the blind, he had compassion and he healed him. He saw the great multitude, the sick, the homeless, the orphans, the widows. He was moved with compassion. In fact, his days were filled with compassionate acts. Then when Jesus went to the home of Lazarus and the people were weeping, he had compassion. He felt their pain and loss and he comforted them. So for many of us in 2020, like myself, it was a tough year. It was truly a fearful time. You were secluded. Well, I was secluded from my family and friends. I couldn't even see my grandchildren at, the, at first and uh, my church family. And so I prayed, I asked God many a time to eradicate this virus pandemic from our land. In addition, so many of us lost loved ones. I too lost my mom and other family members and friends. But through it all, I felt God's compassion. His love was evident. Yes, he provided angels to minister to me. So many of you reached out to me and showed me compassion. You were his hands and your feet, embracing God's beautiful attribute of compassion. And likewise, he provided opportunities for me to show compassion to others. So for me, Jesus is compassionate. Mm, compassionate. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And so it's interesting then as we as we uh, turn to the next part of our study, which speaks about um, about anger. So the rod of punishment. How about this? For all his anger. Whose anger is this? This is God's anger. Uh, so we're going to do a contrast now as we move from what Ivan just shared, God's compassion, God's goodness. But what about this anger? And we see Jesus also expressing anger. So what about that? For all, all this, his anger did not turn away, but his hand is stretched out still. So uh, we won't be able to, uh, to uh, exhaust the topic here, not at all. But basically, the point is that God let the people of Israel suffer uh, the difficulties, the consequences of their mistakes. Interesting. Would they repent of their sins? Which, what is sin if not self-harm or harming of others? But would they turn away back to him? If the people had repented, the difficulties would have stopped. Uh, we see that principle of cause and effect all throughout scripture and it isn't just in scripture although that's all that i need to pay attention 
but it makes sense. This is how life works. Whatever you reap, you sow. So God allows in his wisdom the consequences of one's choices, and even in the case of disobedience, uh, those consequences to come. And for some of us, uh, we may reflect and and turn back to him. And I know that lots and lots of people have that story. When it just got to be too much, when it was like, what am I doing? Then we made a decision. I need to, this is not working. I can't continue to do the same things hoping to get good results. If, if all I've gotten is bad results from my choices, then it may be time to make some different choices. So I have a question for everybody. Please, I'm going to be watching your 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 sharing. Please answer this question uh, because it could just be a tremendous encouragement to someone here today. And the question is, has suffering in your own life caused you to turn away from a wrong course? I know it gets, that's a kind of a personal question, right? And uh, sometimes we like to lead with our strength. But the Bible says that we get to lead with our weakness. It's okay to share. It's okay to, for people to know that we are human. And so, has suffering turned? Uh, has suffering in your own life caused you to turn away from a wrong course? And uh, let me bring my pastor friend, Pastor Jan. Would you share on this topic? It looks like you're still muted, so we can't hear you. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. Me. Yeah, I would like to share a testimony here. I was born uh, in a communist family, and we believe, you know, ourself is God. We also, you know, worship, uh, you know, ancestors, you know, in our life. So when I was like uh, 16 years old, uh, my family bought a new house. And after we moved to the new house, uh, my family continue, you know, uh, uh, worship the ancestors, burn the, you know, fake money to our, you know, ancestors. Uh, because of that, one day, uh, when my mother burned those, you know, fake money, and suddenly my nose was bleeding. Hey, Jian, and Jian, then, uh, pardon me. So you, you said that part of the ancestor worship was to... Was was to use a burn money? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, burn the you know the untrue money. We call like a evil money. So it's a ceremony that involves some kind of uh, some kind of money yes, activity burn as, a, as a part of worship. Yes, of well, worship to ancestors. I see. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank keep, you. Keep going. Uh, this is fascinating. Sorry I, I for never my heard poor, this poor English. So no, no, uh, you're fine. No problem. One day, um, my mom did that, and my nose just suddenly bleeding, and I couldn't stop it uh, for a long time. And then later, soon, my mom got uh, very sick. So now, when we look back, we can see those are satanic activities. You know, because my mother was very sick, we spent a lot of money. We, you know, went to a lot of uh, different hospitals, try to find, uh, you know, uh, solutions, but we couldn't find. And, the, you know, the hospital, the doctors, they couldn't tell what is wrong with my mother. So one day, our, you know, relatives, you know, introduced us to go to church to, to, to believe Jesus. So... That was the last, you know, way for us or last chance to find something to help us. So my family, uh, we go to the church and we start, you know, pray God to heal us, heal my mother. So after three months, my mother got recovered completely. And Today, she's still, still very healthy. And one very, uh, you know, a thankful thing is me and my mom my, and my brother all become a Seventh-day Adventist today because we know Jesus. 
we are not living in the suffering uh, you know experience so when i look look back it was a dark and a painful journey for us but now we are the children of god we are thankful we are not worship the ancestors or idols anymore and we worship the true god so in this experience i learned that even though suffering is painful and not pleasant but there are blessings from it that god can walk out it's just remind uh remind me that what the bible says uh you know from the book of isaiah god's way higher than our way and god's thought higher than our thought mm. wow my friend i am just uh just uh, even though you just got to share a little bit uh I i'd love to hear your entire testimony uh, your entire story that's fascinating thank you for sharing and so uh, my friend, whoever you are that is watching this, uh, if you are uh, just going through suffering that somehow you think maybe is the customs in my culture, the things I grew up with, or the pressures that I've been uh, subjected to, and, and this suffering may just be related to these choices, either, either my choices or choices that maybe were made for me, but that maybe you have a power to change. Uh, that's a powerful thing to uh, to ha to have the opportunity to know that um, that our choices do make a big difference, and the choice as Pastor Jen just shared was turning to Jesus. What a what a powerful powerful thing! Wow, my friends, and I see that our time is basically gone. Um, I can't believe it. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to jump here. Um, to the end, I have to skip a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but saying just we're going to get here to the topic of the Savior. It's going to jump to Isaiah chapter 12. And here's the scripture. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Yes. <laughs> uh I'm just uh, just excited about uh, the fact that there is a solution to the human problem, the human trouble. And so, uh, what can we say here? Uh, Jesus is the only source of salvation. He will be our song, our very song, when we'll sing together the song of Moses, the servant of God and the song of the Lamb. That's from uh, uh, Revelation 15, 3. Uh, and so that's, that's powerful. Wow. Uh, I don't have time to get into all the stuff that we could get into. So I'm just going to ask you, Yvonne, share in, in one word. That's going to be a challenge. What is God saving you from in one word? Myself. <laughs> I love it. Uh, are you familiar with the prayer, Lord, relieve me from the bondage of self? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, Eternal damnation. Yes. Mm, uh, yes. Chian, what about you? In one word, what's God saving you from? Uh, God saved me from a very terrible uh, a, a young teenager journey time. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, yeah, we could say so much more, but I'm also thankful to be saved from from ego, from my own will that can just take me to places I don't want to go uh, to hurt myself and others. Is that you too, my friend? Uh, so look, as our time has expired here, I'm wearing my growth group uh, t-shirt. You see that? Um, because I'll tell you that, uh, now nobody get offended at Seabrook, but the most important title of Seabrook Adventist Church is Growth Group Leader. You know why that is? <laughs> that is because um, we believe that it is in the smaller fellowship. Now we're glad that you come 
to our big gatherings where we have hundreds of people and now online thousands of people uh we're glad that you're here but let me tell you something if you really want to get to know the noble prince of peace uh you've got to uh, overcome whatever fear you might have and get together with a group of 10 to 12 people and open the bible together and pray together that's going to be powerful this is how we grow yes we we are inspired in the masses but we grow in the smaller group and i promise you that you'll make some friends so at cbrocksda.org you can right now pick a group that will work for you we have groups every single day of the week so you don't have an excuse oh i, I work at night we have groups that meet in the in the morning. Oh, I, uh, I I work all day. I only have night. We have groups at night. Oh, I'm only free on Fridays. We have groups on Friday. We have groups every day of the week. So SeabrookSDA.org, click on the growth group banner and join a group today because they begin next they begin next week. A week from tomorrow, February 7th, uh, they will be starting. So that's my appeal to you. And now we're gonna end and I'm gonna have my friend. Uh, Pastor Gian, uh, please have our closing prayer. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for uh, giving us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much for this chance that we can learn and share about your uh, powerful love in our life. We pray that you continue feel, to fulfill us with your love, with your peace, and send us as your peace to the community as well. We ask you to bless each all of us here and all of our family. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you again in just about 15 minutes or so. We'll begin our worship service. Pastor Johnson today wrapping a powerful series on the first commandment you don't want to miss it uh, make sure to like and subscribe that way you don't miss anything and remember i'm going to be posting the link for the readings for next week and also an audio file i'll post it in there so if you subscribe to our youtube channel or like our facebook page you'll get a notification when we do that and that way you don't miss it god bless you and we'll see you again next week